Mahdi Hassan, British-American political journalist and author, tweeted, To all my colleagues in the media, please don't call the new Taliban government in Afghanistan Islamic, please. Now you might be shouting, wait, what? Don't call the Taliban Islamic, you say? What should we call them then? Hindu? Buddhist? Christian? But that's not what he means. He means, don't call them Islamic meaning to do with Islam or following the teachings of Islam. Does Mahdi have a point here? Should we not call them Islamic? Does Taliban have nothing to do with Islam? If it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck and looks like a duck, is it a frog? Let's have a go at it, shall we? I'm Abdullah Samir. Your friendly ex-Muslim. I'm here to dialogue with believers and to dissect claims made about Islam and Muslims. Do subscribe if you're new here. So one thing to point out is that Mahdi is Shia. He subscribes to a different interpretation of Islam than the Taliban does. But is that why he's saying this? Maybe. But more likely, he doesn't want us to associate Islam with this terrible group, which is known for human rights violations and killing innocents, among other things. Yeah. According to the UN, of the three, 4,000 people, civilians, who were killed in Afghanistan last year, the Taliban killed 75% of them. But they're also known for Islam. For heck's sake, the group calls themselves the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Taliban comes from the word Talib, meaning students. And he has a response to that too. He tweets to all the idiotic reply guys saying, but that's what they call themselves. North Korea calls themselves the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, but we obviously don't call it or consider it democratic. He has a point, sort of. In this case, North Korea is about as extreme an example of not democracy that you can think of. I mean, come on. Everybody knows that it's a dictatorship. There's strict control over information getting into or out of the country. They do have elections, but voting against the official candidate or refusing to vote is considered an act of treason. So there are well-established democracies, and then countries that are budding democracies, and then those that are completely contradictory to democracy in every possible manner, more than any other country on this earth, like North Korea. To use this analogy doesn't work with Islam and the Taliban. For one thing, because Islam is not just one thing. It's different things to different people. So if Mahdi wants to use this yardstick, doesn't that mean by the same token others can call him a kafir or a disbeliever? Because he's Shia and not Sunni. Is Mahdi being a takfiri, a type of Muslim that considers others disbelievers that don't follow his particular interpretation? I don't think that's what Mahdi means, but this is a logical conclusion of what he's saying. If they call themselves Muslim and claim to be Islamic, what right do we have to deny them that? Sunni Muslims do this all the time. They claim Ahmadis are not Muslim, sometimes that Shias or other sects like Ismailis are not Muslim. Is that what he's advocating? If they want to identify as Islamic, don't be trans-Islamophobic. Let them identify as Islamic. The real reason is he doesn't want anything bad to be associated with Islam. But the problem is, you can't take Islam out of the Taliban. What are they motivated by? What are their goals? The Taliban are a group of people that were educated in traditional Islamic schools and fought during the Soviet-Afghan war. They shifted power away from the warlords to the Mujahideen, Islamic fighters. Taliban have been known for the strict interpretation of what? Buddhism? No, Islam. They wanted to establish Islam politically. In their rule, between 96 and 2001, they banned paintings, photography, movies that depicted people or other living things, music using instruments, banned women from attending schools and working, and that women had to be accompanied by a male relative and wear a burqa at all times in public. Where are these values coming from, you might ask? Buddhism, right? No, 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 no. Stop saying Buddhism. Mahdi Hassan said, don't call them Buddhists, please. This has nothing to do with Buddhism. Okay, Mahdi didn't say that. But if he did, nobody would disagree. The Taliban did not invent these rules. Many of these teachings are directly from Islam or inspired by Islam. Go to any fatwa website such as Islam QA and you will see rulings such as music and movies are forbidden. Drawing pictures is un-Islamic. Women have to cover up. They cannot travel alone and so on. While not all scholars would agree with all of these rulings, 
all of the rulings the Taliban are making fall within Sunni Islamic teachings, or even Shia, if you look at what Iran has done, such as charging women for dancing in videos. Saudi also implements many of these same laws, such as women cannot travel alone. Even for the Hajj pilgrimage, which is mandatory on all Muslims, a woman can't go alone without a male relative. What about women not working? Does Islam say that? Well, the Quran does tell women to cover up and not make obvious the beauty. The Hadith adds to this and teaches that the best place for a woman is in her home. Islam QA even says that mixing is haram and women and men should not work together. Muhammad told women it's even better to pray in your house rather than at the mosque, even though it's okay to go to the mosque if you want. What about the burqa? Is that Islamic? The burqa is a type of niqab that covers the entirety of a woman's shape and head and face. This is again an Islamic teaching to cover up. What other religion takes such great measures to hide women from the public? The details on how to cover and the style vary from culture to culture, but the covering part comes from a very favorite religion, Islam. Muhammad Omar, or Mullah Omar as he was known, is the founder of the Taliban. He studied in madrasas, Islamic schools, along with the other Tulab students that founded the group, the Taliban. When he founded the Taliban, he was given the title Amir al-Mu'minin, the leader of the faithful. The same title given to the first caliph of Islam, Abu Bakr, another Islamic reference. There's a disgusting cultural practice in Afghanistan known as Bacha Bazi, where young boys are abused sexually by older men. And the practice of bacha bazi by warlords was one of the key factors in Omar mobilizing the Taliban. Reportedly in 1994, he freed some young boys and girls from warlords. My guess is they have an issue with bacha bazi because of the homosexuality part, not because of the rape part. Because slavery is okay with jihadis. It's part of the bounty of war. His entire movement was inspired by the concept of jihad in Islam. Omar spoke Arabic and was devoted to the lectures of another jihadi, a famous one known as Sheikh Abdullah Azam. Mullah Omar later met Osama bin Laden, who also has nothing to do with Islam, of course. So after all this is said and done, I'm going to add a disclaimer. That it's not that simple to say the Taliban are the best or most pure version of Islam, or the most correct one. If you'd like to hear more about what I have to think about that, check out my video, Are the Taliban Islamic, linked above. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Mehdi Hassan, for your comments about not calling the Taliban Islamic. I had a lot to say about that. Thanks to my beloved patrons and supporters for your continued financial assistance. I hope to be making more such content in the near future. Check out my Patreon for how you can support me. This is your friendly ex-Muslim, Abdullah Samir, signing out.